How's it going y'all? Ryan De La Garza here. We're going to do another Desmos build along. And so in this one, I've had several people ask me about locking in student answers. So once they submit something, um, kind of locking that answer in so they can't make any changes. Now, Desmos is a great place for letting students expand their thinking and explore and play with and grow that thinking. And that's what I personally believe is, is its best use, but I do understand that sometimes you may have assessments or situations where you want to capture that initial thought and what they have and really want to hold on to that. So we're going to look at how to make that happen using the hidden sync and then also an additional piece to let you see that with cell content. So remember, if you want to build along with me, you can follow the link in the description to get to this activity. I'll be building on screen two. You can build along with me on screen one. And then afterwards, I have screen three here that's a full example with notes in the computation layer that you can go back and refer to as you need to. So let's dive in and get this going. So I have a setup here with a couple questions, a multiple choice and a math input, right? So if I select my favorite animal as a dog and I say the answer is two and then I submit, great, but it's here and I could go back and I could make those adjustments, which is great in most cases. But sometimes, like I said, we want to lock that in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the hidden sink. So I'm going to come into my computation layer and I'm going to put hidden when this is submitted. So I'm going to say I want to hide this. So let's zoom in right here. I want to hide this component when this component has been submitted. So whenever a student submits their answer, that's when I want to come in and I want to hide it. So normally our multiple choice options don't come with a submit button. But as soon as you add in this hidden sync and say this dot submitted, you're going to notice that we have a submit button now, right? So if I come in and I test this out, I say dog and I can press submit and it goes away, disappears, answer locked in. But I think that's not very fair just to say submit and it disappears. So I want to put a label on there that's going to let students know what we're doing. So we're going to come in here and we're going to put submit label and I'm going to put that text as lock in my answer. So I can make that text whatever I want, um, but you could have it say share with class, you could have other things, but I want to say lock in my answer. That way at least students know that once I press this, it's getting locked in and there's nothing I can do about it, right? So let's test that out now, right? I can see lock in my answer. I select tree as my favorite animal. I lock it in and it disappears. So now we at least know what's going on. So let's do the same thing over here in our math input. Okay, so we're going to come into our computation layer um, and I'm going to use my hidden sync and I'm going to say hidden when this dot submitted. So same process, right? So I want to come in and I want to hide my component. I want it to be hidden when this has been submitted. So when this component is submitted, we're going to hide it. Okay, again, let's do the same piece that we did before though, right? I wanna tell my students that we're about to do this. So I'm gonna put my submit label and I'm gonna make that submit label say lock in my answer. So now let's preview this. Here I select tree is my favorite animal, lock it in. Two is my response, lock it in and it's gone. So great, this locks in our answer. There's a downside though. If you're viewing this from the teacher side of things, if you come in and look at the student work, there's no way for you to see this. If I've submitted this as a student, this is the exact screen you're gonna get. So you may not have a way, now you can look at the summary and see what each student submitted. You can look at the dashboard and you can see whether, if you have some correctness checks in there and I'll put a link up there uh, to a card that has some of my videos on adding correctness checks, you can see that on the dashboard. But if you wanna come in and see their work, you're kinda of stuck. So I want to use another trick that's going to at least put that answer up there so we can see what's going on. Let's come back here and we're going to add a table component. So let's come in and here's my table and I'm going to put it underneath and I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to delete this column. So it's a one column table here and I'm going to title it your answer. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this cell with the student's response. That way they leave kind of like an answer behind that's gonna show you what they put. So let's come into our computation layer and I'm gonna put cell content for row one, column one. 
So I want to start off and I want to say row one, column one, this is what I want the cell content to be. Now there's some different options. I want to take whatever's in that answer choice and I want to bring it into the cell content. So I'm going to say when choice, whoops, got to name it. We need to name things in our computation layer. I'm going to name this choice two. I'm going to go ahead and name this input two. Again, remember I like those twos just because I'm on screen two. So I want to say when choice two dot is selected one. So what this is saying here is that when option one is selected, I want my text to be choice two dot choice content one. So let's unpack this real quick. If I come in here and say when I'm looking at choice two, when option one has been selected, I want the text of this cell to be the content from choice two's option one. So whatever that option choice is, in this case it was cat, it's going to be the content for that cell. So when it's option one is selected, the content in option one is going to be the content of my cell. So we're going to repeat this process for um, the second one, right? So I'm just going to copy this, paste this, use a little J Chow uh, genre of magic here, hold control and you can get multiple cursors, change that to two. And then I'm going to make this three, but remember I'm in a conditional, so I need my otherwise. So I'm just going to make otherwise here, and that's going to be my third option. So if option one selected, it's option one content, option two selected, option two content. Otherwise, if option three selected, it's going to be the option three content, right? So you can go in, make sure we have all of those pieces in. Now, if I preview this, I can see it changing, right? Cat, dog, tree, right? But I don't want that to be there. I want that table to be hidden. I only want that table to show once they've locked in their answer. So again, let's go back and use our hidden sync. We're going to come in here and we're going to say, I want this to be hidden and I want it to be when choice two dot. Now you could do submitted, but for some reason submit wasn't working right. So I'm wondering if there's a bug in there some way. So what we can do is time since submit equals zero. Remember all of our buttons are timers. So as soon as I press it, it kicks off that timer. So what I'm saying here is that I want this component to be hidden whenever that choice two's timer is equal to zero, which just means the button has not been pressed, right? So let's check out how that works. So if I preview this, no table, I select dog as my answer, I lock it in, your answer was dog. Now as a teacher, when I come back and look at this screen, I'm gonna have a table here that's gonna display my student's answer. One other thing I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and format this as text because I have text up here. That way it doesn't get funky if you use some different answer choices. Um, something to think about, you know, you may run into situations if you're, you're using images as those choices. Um, if that were the case, you may change this choice content. Instead of saying choice content, you may put um, in quotations something that described the image, right? Like this was uh, graph one or something, but you can make it a note for you. Uh, so that if you looked at this as a teacher, you would come in and see what your student picked. So let's go in and we're going to do that same thing for the math input over here on this side. So let's add another table. I'm going to drop it below. Again, we're going to come down and make it a one column table. So I'm deleting that and I'm going to say your answer. Now in here, we're going to make the cell content. This one's a little bit easier because it's just um, a math input. So we're going to say this is going to be input to dot latex. So since it's a math input, I'm using latex. If it was a text input, I could use uh, dot content. Um, but this is just going to say whatever's in input to whatever that math type is, drop it in here and make that in my uh, cell. So that one's done nice and simple. And then again, just like before, I want it to be hidden. But in this one, we're going to do input to dot submitted. So this is saying I would hide it when the input has been submitted, but I want it to hide when it has not been submitted. So if you want a not statement, you have to put that not out front. So just to zoom in and unpack this, I'm making the cell content for my first row, first column, whatever is in input two, whatever that latex is, that's what I want to be the cell content. So it's going to drop into that table. And then I want that table to be hidden whenever input two has not been submitted, right? 
So whenever input two is not submitted, that's when I'm hiding this table. So let's test out the whole thing now, see how it works. Tree is my favorite animal, lock it in, there it is in a table. Two is my answer, lock it in, there it is in a table. So that's how we can come in. You can lock student answers, but still leave something behind for yourself um, to view what's going on. So I know we had a lot going on as we unpacked all this. So build along with me. Uh, hopefully you were able to get it to work. If you have any questions or additional pieces, let me know. And happy Desmosing, guys.